Good morning. Billy, please read the problem, and Bobby, please translate. Flippin' physics. A 67 Newton ball is dropped from a height of 79.8 centimeters above a bag of sand. If the ball makes a 9.0 millimeter deep dent in the sand, what is the average force the sand applies on the ball during the collision? Mass equals 67 Newtons. Height initial equals 79.8 centimeters, but we should convert that to meters. So multiply by one meter over 100 centimeters to get 0 0.798 meters. The dent depth equals 9.0 millimeters, which we multiply by one meter over 1,000 millimeters to get 0 0.009 meters. And the average force applied equals question mark. Great, thanks. Bo, please walk me through a general strategy for solving this problem. We could use free fall to determine the final velocity of the ball right before it strikes the sand, which is the same as the initial velocity of the collision. Actually, we could use conservation of mechanical energy to find that velocity. Sure. Then we could use uniformly accelerated motion equations to determine the acceleration of the ball during the collision, because we know the initial velocity during the collision. The final velocity of the ball during the collision is zero, and we know the displacement during the collision is 9.0 millimeters down. Then we could draw a free body diagram and sum the forces in the y direction to determine the average force on the ball during the collision. Absolutely. So we could use that three-step process to solve this problem. However, that is not what we are going to do. Instead, we are going to use the equation which involves work and energy, which previously I said students often forget, uh, forget about and therefore neglect to use. What is that equation? I do not remember. I, I got no idea. It's like work energy something. It's the work energy theorem. The, the work, work energy, energy theorem. theorem. But you call it the network equals change in kinetic energy theorem, right, Mr. P? Right. Bobby, please use the network equals change in kinetic energy theorem to solve this problem. Well, network equals change in kinetic energy. That equals kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. That equals one half mass times velocity final squared minus one half mass times velocity initial squared. The initial velocity is zero because the ball is dropped. Wait a second, Bobby. You have to define the locations of your initial and final points before you can use this equation. Right, yeah, sorry. Uh, the initial point is at the top where you drop it, and the final point is at the bottom location where the ball is momentarily at rest as its velocity direction changes from down to up. That means both the initial and final velocities equal zero, and the network equals zero. Oh. That is correct, Bobby. There is zero network done on the ball over the entire event. Again, going all the way from the initial point where the ball is dropped to the final point right at the point where the ball is at the bottom of the dent and changing direction from moving down to moving up. At that final point, the ball is leaving the ground after making the dent. When you add up all the work done on the ball by every force acting on the ball, you get that the network is equal to zero. Bo, what forces do work on the ball? Uh, so we don't have to do this problem in two parts. One while the ball is in free fall, and then one when the ball is running into the bag of sand? That's weird. Yeah, the force applied by the sand on the ball does not act on the ball the whole time, only while the ball is touching the sand. Right. Because the network done on the ball by every force acting on the ball during the entire event equals zero, we do not need to split this problem into two parts. It does not matter when during the event the work is done by each force. The network over the whole event still equals zero. Bo, again, what forces do work on the ball? Well, there is a force applied acting upward on the ball as it collides with the ground, so the force applied does work on the ball. The ball has mass, so there is a force of gravity acting downward on the ball the whole time, so there is work done on the ball by the force of gravity too. That means the sum of the work done by the force applied on the ball plus the work done by the force of gravity on the ball equals zero. 
Therefore, the work done by the force applied equals the negative of the work done by the force of gravity. Bobby, do we use the integral or dot product equation for work in this situation? Well, um, we use the integral equation for work if the force doing the work is not constant, and we use the dot product equation for work if the force doing the work is constant. The force of gravity is definitely constant. It equals mass times acceleration due to gravity, and both of those are constants here. However, is the force applied constant during this collision? Well, the reality is that the force applied during this collision is not constant. However, because the question asks for the average force applied, we can use the constant force dot product work equation because the average of the force applied can be considered to be constant. Billy, please solve the problem from here. Absolutely. Well, we actually use force times displacement times cosine theta rather than the dot product because the forces are not in terms of unit vectors. That means we have the force applied times the displacement for the force applied times cosine of theta for the force applied equals the negative of force of gravity times displacement for force of gravity times cosine of theta for the force of gravity. The displacement for the force applied is the depth of the dent, or 0 0.009 meters. The angle for the force applied is, well, the force applied is up, and the displacement of the ball is down, so theta is 180 degrees. The force of gravity equals mass times acceleration due to gravity, and we have the mass, it is 67 newtons, and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. The displacement for the force of gravity is the initial height of the ball, or 0 0.798 meters. The angle for the force of gravity is, well, the, the force of gravity is down, and the displacement of the ball is down, so the angle is 0 degrees. I'm sorry, Billy, I have to stop you there. There are just too many mistakes in this to let you keep going. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. I, I have to stop you and make sure we fix the mistakes. So who knows what mistakes are in this equation? Well, I told you the mass of the ball was 67 newtons. That does not make sense. Mass is in kilograms, force is in newtons. 67 newtons is the weight of the ball or the force of gravity acting on the ball. The displacement of the ball for the force of gravity has to include the depth of the dent. The force of gravity acts on the ball all the way from the initial point to the final point. So that displacement is 0 0.798 plus 0 0.009. All the displacements should be negative, right? The ball is always going down, which is negative. Actually, remember in the work equation, force times displacement times cosine theta equation, um, we only use the magnitudes of the force and the displacement. It is the cosine of the angle which determines if the work is positive or negative. Yeah, that's right. Thanks. Very nice corrections. Thanks. That means our average force applied works out to be 6,007.6 repeating, or 6.0 times 10 to the third newtons with two sig figs. Roughly 6,000 newtons. For those of you who traditionally work in English units, because there are 4.448 newtons per pound, that works out to be roughly 1,400 pounds of force applied, on average, acting on this 67 newton, or roughly 15 pound ball, as it makes this 9 millimeter dent in the sand. So... Yes, Bob? The force applied by the sand is roughly 90 times greater than the weight of the ball? That seems like a lot. Yeah, 6,007.6 repeating newtons is about 90 times greater than 67 newtons. Why is that? Well, the force of gravity gave the ball kinetic energy, and the force applied has to remove all that kinetic energy from the system over a much shorter distance, so it makes sense that the force applied would be much greater than the force of gravity. Yeah, but 90 times greater seems like a lot. Actually, if you go back to the work equation and solve for the ratio of the force applied over the force of gravity, you get the distance where the force of gravity acts on the ball over the distance where the force applied acts on the ball, and that equals the same exact ratio of roughly 90 we got before. Right, because the force of gravity has 90 times more distance to 
to put kinetic energy into the ball, then the force applied has to remove that kinetic energy. <laughs> cool. Whoa. That actually makes a lot of sense. Very nice, everybody. Please remember the network equals change in kinetic energy theorem. It can be quite useful. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.